Hey everybody, Dominic here uh, with a new video for you. And uh, before I get started with my video, first I want to give a big shout out to CVTC's nursing department. Uh, today, Andrew and I did a training for them on Canvas out at the Menominee campus. And uh, it was a phenomenal experience. Um, we got so many rock star fam uh, faculty in the nursing department as well as all across CVTC. And uh, we in CPD appreciate so much the work that you guys are doing, uh, getting on board with Canvas, uh, getting ready for the coming semesters. Uh, just phenomenal uh, what we're seeing from uh, from all parts of the college. But in this video, a special shout out to our nursing friends. So. In this video, what we're going to talk about is actually a topic that came up today during our training with the nursing department. Uh, a question came up about can students book appointments uh, in Canvas? Is there a way to do that? And the answer is yes, there is a way to do that. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about three tips for utilizing the calendar in Canvas. Uh, three things that maybe you're not aware of. Um, and hopefully these tips will show you just how powerful of a tool the calendar is in Canvas. It is essential to be utilizing the calendar, honestly, in my opinion. Uh, so let's get into it. Um, the first thing I want to talk about, well, actually, let me uh, first uh, point out the calendar. So over here in the, uh, on the left in the global navigation, here is the calendar icon. I can click on that and that will bring me into my calendar. Uh, really quickly, in case you're not already familiar, uh, here you're going to see uh, your courses and, well, really what you're going to see are anything that has due dates. If, if you have an assignment or you have a page that you put a due date on, those are going to show up here on your calendar. Um, now, on the right-hand side, you'll see that you have the choice to turn on or off any calendars. So, for example, here is the Canvas training course. I could turn that off by clicking the little box there. I can turn it back on. Uh, right now, I see some FQAS stuff here. I can turn that on and off here. Okay. So you can turn those on and off. Um, and you can also change the colors over here in the little kebab selectors. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Um, and as always, uh, a great benefit of utilizing um, the calendar is that you can move due dates around. Um, I don't know if I have any here that I can mess with right now. Uh, let's see here, test assignment. Um, okay, that's for, that's for my sandbox course. That's that's pretty safe to use as an example. So here's an assignment that's due on February 1st for my uh, sandbox uh, course. I can actually click and drag and move that to a different day. Uh, so moving due dates, really simple with the calendar. You just drag and drop where you want those due dates to go. Do keep in mind, if you're going to do this, be aware that every time you move a due date, students are going to get a notification. So usually my advice would be, before you start moving due dates around, first, unpublish the assignments or make sure the assignments are not published that you're going to manipulate. That way students don't get an email every time you do something. Okay, And generally I would recommend that you try to get your due dates all set uh, before the semester begins. That way everything's ready to go. Now, the first tip I want to, I mean, that those were just the basics that I just showed you. The first tip I really want to get into is in regards to undated assignments. And another special shout out in this video to Dave Vollmer uh, from the math department. He's kind of the one who clued us in to this. Um, and it's really cool. It's something that we had not even known was a feature. So if you look over here on the right hand side, you see below the calendars, there's an undated section. I can click on that. And what it's going to show me is it's going to show me every assignment in every one of my courses that has no due date. Okay. And it's going to color code them so you can see the colors match up to which course the, uh, the assignments belong to. Okay. Now, the reason I'm showing this to you is because utilizing this section, we can actually add due dates to assignments that don't have due dates yet without having to go into each assignment and type in uh, a due date. 
to do that, all we do, I'll grab this example quiz and I'll drag it right out here. And there we go. The due date for example quiz is now, what month am I in right now? December, uh, December 20th um, at 11.59 p.m. I should note that by default, it will set the due date time to 11.59 p.m. Uh, so you might need to go in and tweak it if necessary. Also be aware, this does not set the available from and until dates. It only sets the due date, okay? But this is great. Uh, if, if you want to just check and see like, gosh, do I have all my due dates set? Well, go into the calendar and look under the undated section. That's a great way to find out. Anything that doesn't have a due date will be listed right there. So that's tip number one. Uh, again, a shout out to Dave Vollmer who uh, gave us that tip uh, on that feature. Okay, uh, tip number two is in regards to appointments. Uh, so like I said, today in our training with the nursing department, the question came up of, can we set uh, uh, office hours? Uh, for our students uh, in Canvas? And the answer is yes, you can. Uh, the way that you do that is up here in the calendar, again, uh, with this little plus sign. If you click on the plus sign here, um, it'll give you the chance to uh, choose some different uh, things that you can set on the calendar. Um, and one of them up here in the top right is appointment group. If I click on that, it's going to give me uh, some options here to create an appointment group. So let's first of all give a name to this appointment group. I'm going to call this uh, Google Consultation Hours, where I will try to answer uh, people's questions about Google. Um, the location, I'm going to say this is in the CPD lab. Uh, now I get to select the calendars. So this will this will indicate which calendars the appointment slots will show up on. Now, if you're doing student hours that are available to multiple sections and multiple courses, you might select more than one calendar. Um, in this case, I only have one Google training course, so I'm going to just choose that one. But you could choose more than one if you wanted to. So students from different classes could sign up for the same group of slots. Okay. I'll click done on that. Um, I could have students sign up in groups if I wanted to. For now, I'm just going to have them do individual. Next, I'm going to choose the time span uh, that uh, these appointment slots will be set up for. Now, this is kind of cool. Uh, first of all, I'm going to pick the date that this will all begin. So let me actually go into the future here. Let's say uh, we'll do Friday, March 8th. Okay. That's where I'll set these appointment slots. And I can choose uh, the beginning and end time for the whole block. So maybe I'll do uh, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Okay. All right. Now, the cool part here is I can actually have uh, the calendar uh, do all the difficult work of making the uh, individual blocks for the uh, or the individual appointments within the block. So I can tell it right here uh, I want to do we'll say one hour uh, meetings. Okay and I hit go and just like that it creates those time slots for me. So all I had to do is, is set the beginning and the end time for the time slot overall, for the block overall, and then it made those individual uh, meeting slots within. Okay, below that I can do some other settings. So the first one, limit each time slot to blank users. So I could allow more than one student to come and see me, or I could leave it as just one. So maybe I want only one student per, I don't wanna have multiple, but I could have more than one if I wanted to. Uh, next, allow students to see who has signed up for time slots that are still available. Uh, so if you had students sign up, uh, you have multiples, multiple students sign up for one for a time slot, they could see who else is going to be there. Um, and then limit participants to attend one appointment. Um, so, you know, this would avoid the situation where someone blocks out all of your time. 
uh, you could set that if you wanted to. And then I can put in some details down here. Uh, come talk to me about all things Google. Okay. All right. And now I just hit publish. And that puts those time slots on my calendar. So let's go check them out. Um, I'm going to go over to March 8th. And you can see here on March 8th, I've got those three time slots ready to go. Um, now, let's see what this looks like from the student perspective. Okay, I'm going to go to my dashboard over here. And I'm going to go into the Google training course. And we're going to pretend to be one of the students in the Google training course. So I'll give that a moment. And I'm going to click on Eskrimore. He's our tried and true test student. I'm going to act as him for a moment. Okay. All right. So right now we are a student in this course. Okay. Now, as a student, I can go over to the calendar. This is my calendar for all of Canvas, not just this course, uh, for everything that I'm a student in. Um, and so, you know, again, over here, I can see all of the calendars that uh, for the courses I'm connected to. Right now, we're looking at February. Let's move over to March. Okay. All right, so here we are in March, and let me do a refresh here really quick, make sure we're getting the correct information here. Oh, okay. See, I forgot something. Okay, so um, by default, it's not going to show the appointment slots. Uh, when students go here, because we don't want to clutter up the calendar with other uh, stuff. Usually the calendar, number one thing we want the calendar for is due dates for assignments. Okay. And we don't want to clutter up the calendar with other stuff. So when students first go here, appointment slots are not going to show up because those could get kind of congested with everything else. So on the right hand side is a find appointment button that students can click. So if I'm a student, I click on that and it will uh, allow me to pick which uh, course I'm searching for appointment slots. Right now there's only one that has appointments available. So there it is, I'll hit submit. And you'll see that now appointment slots have appeared on my calendar, okay? So there on Friday, March 8th, I can see there are three appointment slots available. So now I, as the students, I'm gonna pick uh, 2 p.m. That sounds good, that works for my schedule. So I'll click on 2 p.m. Maybe I'll leave a comment, say, look forward to seeing you. I want to talk about the Jamboard, oops, Jamboard app you showed in your video on the CPD Spotlight. Shameless plug. All right. And then I click on reserve. Okay. So I have reserved that time slot. Uh, so that's going to show up on my calendar. If I close the appointments, you'll see that that still is on my calendar to remind me that I've got that appointment. And if I stop acting as the student and I go back to being a teacher, okay, so now I'm a teacher. Let's go to the month of March. And here you can see that two o'clock appointment slot has been filled. I click on it, I can see that, yep, Eskrimore. Eskrimore has come and there's his message that he left me. So that is a, a function within the calendar app of Canvas uh, for students to reserve uh, hours with you, okay? Now, this is cool, but it leads to another question and this is gonna be my last tip for the video. Can I get the calendar in Canvas 
to talk to my calendar in Outlook or Google or wherever? Can I have this calendar go to another calendar? And the answer is yes, you can. I'm going to show you how. It's pretty simple, honestly. So here I am right now in the calendar in Canvas. And down here in the bottom right is Calendar Feed. If I click on that link, it gives me this URL right here. Okay. And what I can do is I can highlight that URL and copy it. Okay. So I copy that URL. Oops. Okay. So I've copied the URL. And now, for this example, I'll use Outlook because that's the email program that we use at CVTC. I'll open the Outlook application. And what I'm going to do is over here in My Calendars, I'm going to right click My Calendars, and I'm going to Add Calendar from Internet. Okay? Click that, and I'm going to paste that URL that I got out of Canvas. And I'll hit OK. And it's going to communicate for a moment. It says, Add this Internet Calendar to Outlook and subscribe to updates. Yes, please. And you'll see that now there is a new calendar here in Outlook. It's called Dominic Thomas Lawson Canvas. Okay. And this is going to update every time something occurs on my Canvas calendar. So if I go over to March, okay, March, Friday the 8th, there it is, Google Consultation. And I can double click on that and I can see the details. Okay. Now, it doesn't give me a ton of details here. It just gives me information about what the meeting is. But I can always go back to Canvas if I want to see more. But this is great because now I know it's going to, be sh it's going to show up on my Outlook appointments here. Um, it's going to make that just a little bit easier to keep track of. So, those are... Thank you. Thank you, Kuhn. It is. You're right, Kuhn. It's exciting. I agree. It's very exciting. Okay. So... Those are three tips that involve the calendar within Canvas. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I've shown you here today, make sure to reach out to the CPD department. We would love to help you out. And of course, make sure to share this video with your colleagues. Um, we want to make sure that everyone's aware of these resources that we're sharing out with everyone at the institution. And a uh, quick cameo here of my dog, Kuhn. There he is. Isn't he cute? All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you later. Bye.